going on everyone to another fine day and speaking of which today we got a nice tutorial on creating pivot points with your bases now make sure you stay tuned to, towards the end where i got a nice little surprise i've been doing some additional scripting for the bases to add some more capabilities to it so you definitely want to stick around for that uh, but anyhow uh Tilly joe over at the uh, um, bill of ages pointed out that there's just another way to create pivot points. Now if you look, these bases, if I jump over to the pivot points, you'll see that there's no pivot points on these bases. And his suggestion was to essentially center this, these guys to zero. And then just uh, then drop these guys in here one at a time and then you could drop the pivot points right on your models and they would stick so let's go ahead and try that out so first of all for that to happen this has to be centralized and um, we'll, we'll lock it remember we have to lock it to, to make sure we apply the pivot points uh, okay so then oops. so a minute so now we got these guys and let me make a couple clones of these guys. So we want to make six of these guys. Okay. And now we, we do our little trick. So remember, uh, 25 millimeters is about 98 uh, inches and the tabletop simulator uses inches for everything. So we jump over to our handy dandy uh, positioning and um, probably should have picked zero. put him right there so uh, we'll put him down here he'll start at the very center zero zero um, okay we'll grab this guy now and we'll go uh, zero well, let's move him over 98 and uh, put him at zero and he's right there grab the next guy it's gonna be two times 98 so it'll be I wonder if we could do this 98 shouldn't be experimenting no you cannot all right so it's going to be uh 1.96 zero okay <clears throat> now we go to 0.98 and 0.98 because there's one row above oops should have gotten a zero on that one all right zero 0.98 and we want to make this guy also 0.90 uh, and there he goes and then we want to go make this guy one one nine six and uh, 0.98 and there you go okay so now the, the advantage to this um, is that you could align them perfectly aligned to your base. Let's take a look real quick um, at the camera view. Make sure they're aligned. Uh, one thing I've noticed about when you create your own models, um, especially in Blender, you could actually change the origin, the center of origin on your models. And so if you're not careful, your, your models could actually not be centered um, as we know it. So, um, so you wanna make sure you're careful when you do that in Blender. Um, <laughs> Hopefully whoever you're borrowing the models make sure made sure to do that as well. Uh, so now that we have them here, let's go ahead and try to do the pivot points. So we go over here. Now you can use your snap points or your rotate snaps. I personally like the rotate snaps because it, it'll rotate the model for you. You don't have to muck with it. Alright, so here we go. Ready? Drop, 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 drop. Look at that. It works. Um, so we take we take off the um, pivot points, go back to movement trays, and we move these guys off. Now here's a here's a true test. Does the pivot points move with the units, or do they stay here? All right, so let's go back to our pivot points, and voila, they are still there. So, well, let's find out. 
Uh, let's move, unlock this guy now, and move the tree. Go back to our pivot point view. Yep, pivot points are following the tree. So this absolutely does work. It's a great little trick. Um, instead of having to actually just eyeball it yourself, now you have a very accurate way of measuring these pivot points. All right, so at the beginning of the video, I mentioned I had a little surprise for you. So let's uh, move on to the surprise section and talk about some of the developments I've been doing for improving the base creation on Tabletop Simulator for the Ninth Age. All right, so, um, you know, these these tricks, this video that I showed you the last time and, and this new trick that Patilio, Patilio showed us is really, really nice. It does allow you to create um, bases pretty quickly now within 10 minutes or less you could have a base um, you know with your style and if you do multiple then you could have you know you can take care of different bases sizes but they're limited right um, and and uh, if you're not comfortable with those procedures then, then you have to find somebody that's kind enough to do all the work for you and I, I found somebody on our uh, the workshop that actually went out and did all these initial bases for you and this is great um, and they're limited though and you, sometimes you have to get creative like you'll have to double stack them and then there's wonkiness on that um, you're, or you're limited you're by the sizes here and oh you have to start getting real creative and they're limited and you know <clears throat> so if you have scrimmage units now you have to do something special for scrimmage units on the VSER in particular it's painful because they have so many different models with different base sizes and I came up with what I think might be the, uh, uh, one of the better solutions yet. And if you'll notice, I hover over, this is a base size of 25 by 25. And uh, if I hover over, you'll see some buttons that they get, you know, get appended to the, to the left and to the right. And what these buttons do essentially allow you to grow the base size by, you know, you know, rank and file. So in this particular case, I hit the blue and they will add a rank. I'm sorry, a file. So here I go three by three rank and three files. Oh, I, got, I got it the other way around. So I go to three by three. And actually, I only want two, right? If I want to replicate this guy, I want it to be three by two. Uh, and what you'll know uh, is one, it's the same size. So let's take, let's move these guys out of the way and let's compare the size. And, and of course, we're eyeballing this, right? Um, It's comparable sizes, oops. But this is the part that, I, that I'm excited about. Well, there's several other things. One, the fact that it could dynamically create, which is great. Uh, two is that if I jump to the snap points, you'll see that I automatically calculate the snap points as well. And so the, it, it saves you a lot of time now because you don't have to fidget with creating your own snap points. Uh, again, like I mentioned, they're awesome, but at the same time, they're, they're, they're tedious. So if we go over here and grab this unit, do that little rotation trick that I told you about where you hit the number two and it'll give you two ranks, drop them in and they just snap right in. And they follow, so it's tied to the base. Um, so there's that. Um, if you want to grow, you know, if you're in combat here and you want to grow your base size by four by two, you'll just pump, pump up. You'll notice it grows from the center, which is what the ninth age mandates as far as uh, growing your, your rank and file, you know, uh, if you want to reform, it's supposed to reform from the center. So it allows you to actually accurately reform and change your, your base size. And there you go. And the snap points, again, follow the new formation. So there's that. Um, but also, uh, so, so uh, there's a little bit of, of stuff that I've been working on. Uh, it, what, it took me a while to figure out. Ninth Age has some pretty wonky bugs in it. Um, not the Ninth Age, sorry. Tabletop Simulator. And so I had some issues. It's still not ready for prime time. There's a couple things. There's one more final feature I'm waiting that I'm working on right now. And I'm about to show you this. It's probably uh, one of the things I'm more excited about. Uh, well, actually, I'm quite excited about what I just showed you. But the other one is, I don't know about you guys, but in the Ninth Age, I fidget around a lot, not intentionally, um, but it's you know you know movements is is the name of the game, and if you don't move correctly, 
and you find yourself in a bad spot. Um, and so, So uh, I find that I, I often have to move and I, and I have to go back and center myself. I do tricks like throwing the uh, triangle down in the corner and then moving my base. So what I've created, and I think I kind of stole this on, on Won't Lie from Warhol, found that was pretty neat. If you So right click on this guy, add a new menu, and what you do is you click on that and it creates a uh, non-movable object um, that you can just kind of like move. and it, and it marks your spot it's kind of like a marker um, there's a couple things I'm trying to find out uh, either I just make you know the problem is when you come back you really don't know how to line unless you could really eyeball it well I put it right in the center so if you got a dead eye you know and you, and you're not too particular about the being off just by a little bit I think I'm making the triangle big enough to be the size of the base so that this way you'll know exactly how to line it up <clears throat> the easier way no problem is here is be able to click on this guy or just a menu option to say return and it'll, it'll automatically put you right in the right location I'm thinking that might be the way to go uh, so stay tuned for that that's a capability I'm adding I think the the rank and file are, are there thanks for sticking around if you enjoyed this video please make sure you hit the subscribe button I have more content coming more updates on tabletop simulator to be more tabletop friendly this is Covermore signing out remember to keep gaming and stay awesome